Oh, Dave, search for some mad snacks, yo. I have no idea how I'm going to be doing today either because... Oh, I just don't know, but hey. Oh, it was just little cow again. You can never stay mad at him. Anyway, you've got to get this way rude hunger under control. You figure you ought to scope out the fridge for some grub. This hunger is so ill mannered it would make a room full of snooty dowagers commit mass suicide. Dave, open refrigerator. Words. Can I say them? <laughs> oh god, more shitty swords. Of course you knew these were in here. You're not even sure why you looked. If you want to keep any food or beverages in this apartment, you've pretty much got no choice but to hide stuff away in your closet. Yeah, that's not healthy or safe, Dave. <laughs> Dave, take swords. The hell with it. You try to take the entire jumble of unbelievably shitty swords and brace yourself for... Looks like that actually works. Two. Looks like it says looks like that works actually. <laughs> oh well. You capture like the double of unbelievably shitty swords. Dave, use ice maker is still hot around here. Mm. <laughs> you just missed several terry bombs. Yeah. Wait, who is there looking at you in a reflection? <laughs> Where the little dudes can prop to this time? Dave Capture Log Terry Bombs. You go for the cherry bombs, nine, unsuccessfully. After mulling it over a bit, you take the red spherical salute. <laughs> One. <coughs> Dave, take blender. Blender, too, is a pretty simple word. You could already tell it's not going to work. Instead, you take the welling blade pitcher, four. That's really a much better name for it anyway, you think. Dave, activate garbage disposal. <laughs> Dave, stuff down Mr. Purple Guy in the garbage disposal. Because that isn't disturbing at all. You're still not sure what he's so happy about or what he's looking up at, the, uh, looking at up there. Looking up at the eyeball, I can't speak to you. It is Dave. Silly. Hi. Hello, Dave. Ooh. While you're at it, you dump the contents of the blender. Oops. I mean, while I'm blade printer. Why is there an eye there? It is disposal, but you suffer an unfortunate garbage disposal head jam. <laughs> How often does that happen that he actually has a name for it? You notice something in the reflection, something above you. Dave, look up. Hello, Dave. It's a hatch to the scroll, crawl space above your apartment. Bro's always tucked away in there when he's busting out his rad stealth stunts. He's so slick that dangling the cord, ne the dangling cord never jo even jostles. My God, you just know he's being ironic with these weird mind games. He's not being ironic. There's no way anyone could be serious about aping those shitty moves. Dave used the turntables and some box to make a port. <laughs> Bro's ass. It's a pretty sweet fort. You just 
made and you're pretty sure your brother would agree. Under different circumstances you might be high-fiving over it right now. But rather than get inside and take her for a spin, you really just needed to use it to get up to that hatch. Jay, Dave, did I say Jave? <laughs> Dave Yankord. It is time to face your destiny. No going back now. <laughs> you totally got covered in the smuppets. Yeah, there's pretty much no way there wasn't going to be a bunch of puppets in there. Okay, wait, hold on while. Why am I getting this stupid game for you? You're the one who should be really stupid puppet ass. What is the specific problem? The problem is I'm up to my goddamn neck in fucking puppet dong. You know you like the mannequin dick. Accept it. I am robed in chafing, wriggling, god fucking damned puppet pelvis. An obscenely long, coarse hermit cock is being dragged across my anguished face. Let's put this into perspective. You put up with the puppet prostate because you love it. Also, course is a good word. You don't seem to harbour any sympathy for the fact that I've burrowed fuck deep in the lively, fluffy muppet paddock. I'm whirling in the terrible cyclone at the epicenter of my own personal holocaust of twitching foam noses. It's like a fucking apocalypse of perky proboscis here. Like the proboscolypse, I guess. Are uh, you going to start rapping about this? What? No. No, listen. From a flesh bereft of home, found solace twixt a cleft of foam. Oh no, Jesus. Of apocalypse your thoughts eclipse, a painted pair of parted lips, that dare through kiss to stir the air, that teases tufts of orange hair, and though faces flush in lovers' fits, and snug in plushes, gloves be thick. Okay, Dickinson, if you could shut your perfumey trap for half a second, this is serious. I am just saying, if I see one more soft, bulbous borrow being like, kind of jutting out and impotent or whatever, I'm gonna fly off the handle. I'm gonna do some sort of acrobatic fucking pirouette off the handle and win like a medal or some shit. Then let's hope there will be a squishy derriere somewhere below the handle to break your fall. Dave, read the note on the hatch. <laughs> Bro, roof. Now, bring cow. We're doing it, man. We're making this happen. Dave burst out of the puppet pile like the one. <laughs> Don't be the other guy. You are now the other guy. John, take dowels and sheets from bed and make a tent. <laughs> this is so much fun. A huge waste of time, yes, but so much fun. I like how he's standing on the book to do it. <laughs> Where it just chucks it all away. Carve a totem of the punk pogo card. You put the punched card containing the pogo right in the slot and carve a totem from one of the crocsite dowels. Draw a repeat process with other cards and dowels. You use the card containing the code for the hammer as well as the one with the random code you punched over the shaving cream card for the hell of it. You cut the respective totems for the card. John, do the same thing with the capture log, capture log card.
That's an interesting one. You make a totem from the capture lock card. Pretty bare bones looking totem if you ask you. Rose, collect totems. Capture lock card, pogo rod, hammer, something. <laughs> you stir the totems in your ethanium. Rose, produce capture lock card. The Archimedes requires one unit of any type of grit to produce one card. You decide to use Shale, since it seems less generally useful than Bill Grist as of now. You make a whole bunch of them. Yes, you did. <laughs> Look at John being all happy there. Whoa, did you just make all these? Yes. Sweet, thanks. What did you do with all the blue wobbly vase looking things? I bought the to uh, I bought the totems out to the Archimedes to test them. I'm taking some things in my own hands to save top. Well, okay. So complacent there, John. <laughs> you create a hammer at the expense of two units of Bilgrist. And <laughs> John is now armed again. <laughs> you make a pogo ride too. Minus five. Build one shale. You use a totem card with the random code. You create a, a rocket pack with some random crap stuck inside it. It looks like a cinder block, a violin, and a flower pot. The items are rendered in the device completely inoperable. <laughs> you figured it as well put this piece of junk to use. John collect cards. Using a little strategy, first you grab Harry Anderson's Wise Guy by Mike Caveney, then the fl cards, then you eject the PDA, then you reject the PDA, then the book again to flush the cards in your deck. That's going. John, turn on Detect Collisions. Eject. Philo. Fifo. Okay. You flip your fetch mode eye, but find no such option. This is idiotic. John, read book. Be the wise guy. And I don't think I'll have time to actually read this. So I'm going to stop it here. Bye.